Welcome to a new vlog. Today we'll be talking a little bit about the gear that I have recommended over the years and I would still recommend it today after some fair usage which might or might not have changed my original opinion expressed in the review video. This is about the main gear in my lab, stuff that I use very often on a daily or regular basis. At first sight this stuff might seem very good and I will recommend it based on my findings and generally that should be valid even after a couple of years of usage but in some cases there might be some little things that you only discover after extensive usage of the product and I'm gonna start with the Gopher NPS 1601 which is like the uh, latest revision of this power supply model that actually uh, got this channel started. My first video was about an earlier version of this power supply it was called CPS 3205 and uh, since then I have done numerous videos on these power supply units and yes 100% after years of usage I would still recommend this as probably the best entry level power supply unit you can get. It doesn't come loaded with gimmick features like some of the other power supplies available on the market but it is reliable, it has decent specs, low noise output and it will serve you well over the years. This is one of the few products that even after receiving a couple for free from the manufacturer I still went and purchased a couple of my own so I can 100% still recommend getting one of these uh, power supplies which I will link in the description below so you can check it out and fortunately there are no hidden things that I later discovered about this power supply what you see is what you get. But before I continue with the other products, let me introduce you to the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, which is my favorite PCB manufacturer. They provide excellent quality with fast turnaround times and currently they are running a Christmas year-end sale with a bunch of stuff like free coupons, discount codes, various contests. So now it's a good time to get a good deal on those boards you are designing. Check out their offer. Next up is the Kaysger T12 STM32 base soldering station and I believe this one is version 2.1S. This has been my main soldering station for the past couple of years and although it's not perfect and there were a few issues I showed in a previous video, overall this works and actually this works very well and it has been serving me reliably on my day-to-day -day soldering tasks. I have a wide selection of T12 tips for this and not a single one failed after all this time. This comes with a plastic enclosure which is good for electrical safety. I mean it would have been nicer if it would be in uh, aluminium but honestly when you start using it you don't care about the enclosure anymore. The handle and the uh, silicon cable looks and feels like new even after many many hours of usage so once again this is a product I can 100% still recommend for purchasing. The price to quality ratio on these is great. And while we are in the soldering department, let's talk about the best BST863 hot air station. I've had this for about a year and a half and it's been my main hot air station all this time. I've highly recommended this station in the review video which I'll link on screen so you can check it out. The performance is good, it heats up quickly and has more than you need air pressure. This is basically a clone of the Quick 861DW but less expensive. And I've actually purchased a uh, set of uh, nozzles for this. They were advertised as uh, Quick 861DW nozzles and they fit just nice on my uh, best station. I would still recommend getting this uh, hot air station and I will place links to places where you can get this in the description below but here are a couple of things which I've learned after using it. My biggest complaint is the uh, length of this uh, hose which is too short it's 75 centimeters long so you're gonna have to place this on your workbench keep it pretty close to your work area and I don't have a lot of space on my bench so that's a problem for me because the station is kind of taking up a lot of real estate on my work area and you can forget about placing this on a shelf above your workbench the uh, hose is likely not gonna reach your work area because it's too short so 
Keep this in mind if you plan to order this station. And the uh, user interface with the uh, touch controls, it's still annoying after one year of usage, but luckily I don't have to mess with that too often because uh, I have these uh, presets configured on the hard switches. So I typically just use the uh, presets. I've had the KP184 electronic load for less than one year, but I have used it extensively during this time. I've tested mostly batteries, but also uh, some power supply circuits, and there is nothing to complain about this. It's still the best electronic load you can buy for the money. I've even abused it by uh, accidentally reversing the uh, polarity on its input, and it survived that just fine. The drawbacks mentioned in the review video still apply. There isn't like a manufacturer supplied PC app for logging data, but I hear someone has created a paid Windows app that works with this electronic load. So if you really need that functionality, I'm guessing you could uh, buy a license and use that third party provided software. But other than that, this is a solid choice. Yes, there are things which could be improved, like the grounding of the metal uh, chassis or maybe the build quality, but nothing obviously bad there. And you'd also have to look at the alternatives. There is nothing of this level available on the market right now for the same cost. So check out the link to this in the description below. And uh, if you're searching for the review video, I will link it on screen right now. Next is my uh, portable screwdriver set. This is a uh, Xiaomi Weha screwdriver set. And this has been uh, pretty popular among my uh, viewers. Myself, I think I got about four sets of these and I uh, have offered them as gifts to technical people. Uh, these are great value for money. Uh, they are Weha type quality level, but Xiaomi type pricing. I think I've had mine for almost two years and it's like new, but it's in moderate usage because of the uh, size of the screwdriver handle. I mostly use this to get into uh, small gadgets like smartphones, laptops, uh, stuff like that where it's about the precision, not about force. Uh, not much to say or complain about a good quality screwdriver set. This still remains a solid choice and uh, an excellent gift idea. And the final product I would like to mention is my Creality Ender 3 Pro 3D printer, which I've had for less than a year, but I've been a Creality user for longer because I've previously had the bigger CR10. I think the Ender 3 is a much better choice for me because I don't ever need a bigger build volume than uh, this is offering. So it's nice and compact because of that. And using such a popular build platform like the Ender 3 sure does have some advantages like you can easily find upgrades that are plug and play and you can easily find support and improvements for pretty much any problem you might encounter with this printer. But if you're the type of user that just wants to hit print and get the part done, you are probably better off with something like a Prusa, which requires much less user intervention and tuning. So it highly varies depending on your usage scenario and your budget. But as far as the Ender 3 Pro is concerned, it's a solid choice, nothing to regret here and good value for money. So these were the uh, products that I wanted to mention in this video. It's kind of a new format of video that I've been thinking of doing for a while for the reasons explained in the start of this video. I do these product reviews and I might overlook something or I might not discover some stuff until after I've used the product for a while. And I think it can help to offer this kind of feedback after I have used the products for, I don't know, at least six months. Let me know what you think about this uh, new type of video. I might only do it once per year towards the end of the year. And uh, also let me know if you own these products, if you've ordered them after my recommendation and if you've been happy with them. Thank you for watching and don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month. I'll see you next time.